Attorneys representing the Providence City Council filed a motion in Superior Court to intervene in the agreement that allowed 10 downtown properties owned by Arnold Buff Chase to pay significantly lower property taxes over the next three decades. Target 12 investigator Alexandra Leslie has been poring over these newly filed court documents that now thrust the council and the Smiley administration into a legal war. Alex? City Council hired attorney Max Wistow is arguing that the agreement was entered into by city officials without the City Council's approval and therefore breaks the law. A 2021 consent order entered into under the former Mayor Jorge Lorza administration with developer Arnold Buff Chase may be costing the city as much as $42.5 million in lost revenue over the next three decades. Providence City Council President Rachel Miller has said repeatedly councilors were never privy to the deal that allowed Chase to pay significantly less in property taxes. There is a question about the authority of the past administration to enter into that agreement. I think we have an obligation to see that question through. In exchange, the deal stipulated that Chase had to designate a portion of his properties as affordable housing under what's called eight law. A spokesperson for Chase and his development company told me 73 units across his 10 properties are earmarked as affordable. But the city council's lawyer, Max Wistow, argued the deal was, quote, done by the executive branch of the city of Providence and Buff Chase in order to evade the laws of this state and of the city. These charges are serious. If this thing stands, uh, other uh, uh, developers will say, I want the same thing. And if you don't give it to me, you violated my rights to equal protection under the law. How do you benefit this guy and not me? The consent order was flagged by the city's internal auditor, Gina Costa, last year. Court documents show Costa and another city staffer, Sean Bouchard, tried to get answers from the city solicitor and the city's chief financial officer. Communication became confrontational at times, with one email from Bouchard reading, quote, I believe this is the only time in my over two and a half years with the city that I have been unable to receive any written response to an email I've sent. That is both credit to the administration's responsiveness over the years and a glaring issue for me on why these questions are proving so problematic. My colleague Eli Sherman and I dive deeper into the back and forth between city officials in our story on WPRI.com. A hearing on the city council's motion is scheduled in Superior Court later this month. With the Target 12 investigators, Alexandra Leslie, 12 News.